firstly, apologies for the quality of the talk. Um, I broke F input about a week ago, and so I spent the time trying to fix it so I could use X enough to give the presentation. Um, turns out I mostly can't, except thanks to ACPI and routing random buttons on my laptop to do random things through ACPI, and also having a command line client you can use window management for. Um, I can get this far, which is an achievement. And space works, so you know I can move to slide. Um, so yeah, I'm half of the X input massive. Um, the other half is Peter, who's ninja and awesome, but sadly he's not here. Um, he's been doing a lot more than me, but I, I'm in Europe, so I get the same fortune at conferences, and he only gets LCA all that. <laughs> if no LCA is good, we should come to it. Right. Um, so input. Uh, at the moment, consists of XKB, the keyboard extension. Um, XKB makes a lot of sense uh, when you think about it, but then you realise that it does everything for you except for actually mapping uh, keys to key symbols, and it sort of makes progressively less sense from there. Um, it's not really. Uh, those of you who were here two years ago in the sort of dev room may have heard me ramble about the same thing. And it's getting better incrementally. Um, then there's XI, the X input extension, and um, sadly I didn't have time to do graphs. I had about six minutes in which I got ten slides out, which I'm pretty happy with. Um, but Peter has a brilliant graph of XI, uh, which is applications using XI versus applications not using XI. Uh, rounded to the nearest percentage, it was 100 versus 0. Uh, GIMP uses XI and it uses it quite badly. And there's also the mandatory train wreck because it's all a nightmare. I don't have time enough or at the moment anger enough, I'm just kind of tired to describe how bad XKB is. Um, so basically, keyboards started with, you know, you have a key on your keyboard, you press it and the letter J comes out. Uh, this is the bit XKB doesn't handle, but it turns out that if you want to name your LEDs, it can do that, except where it can't, because you can configure it, but it's all broken. <laughs> um, and the failure sort of starts from there and descends into things like XKB get keyboard by name being the function you call if you want to set a keyboard map. Well done, Tully. Yeah. Um, and basically, it's kind of glued together really badly. And by glued, I mean one side's kind of moist and you slap them together and hope for the best. Um, basically, all the clients deal with um, five primitives of rules, model, layout, variant, options. So, you know, I want the US layout or I want the finished layout, not that anyone does. Um, and options, like I don't want caps lock, I want that to be control instead. Um, XKB itself doesn't deal with these. It deals with five other primitives that no one at all uses. Um, but because they couldn't be bothered wrapping the protocol, um, instead you have to have basically the maps both on the client and the server. And the best part about that is XML, which sort of says a lot. But um, over the last two years I've been deleting a lot of XKB. Uh, sometimes it broke people's ability to VT switch, uh, mostly not. And <laughs> I now understand most of it, except why the VT switches are broken. Um, don't run master, sorry. Um, but we have a solid plan to fix it now. Um, I've got a commit pending which will remove an additional few thousand lines of code for no real use. Because it has things like the ability to compile incomplete maps. So you can say, I want symbols and I want types and compass, but I don't want indicators. 
Um, and that, you would think, is really useful, and they've sort of very painfully provided for things you need, things you want, and you can pass all this through to your map building function, except if you don't specify all of them, then the server just falls over because it tries to unconditionally dereference everything. <laughs> um, it's like Brilliant, except the other one. Um, GP is going to rewrite XKB comp. Um, he said this yesterday, and I'm calling him out here because I have no idea about parsers, and I'd really like for him to do it. Um, thanks, Keith. Good man. Um, sorry. And basically, everyone's a winner with XKB except for all the people who aren't, which is everyone who has a keyboard. <laughs> <coughs> XI is tragically unused except without all the tragedies because it's misdesigned horribly. Um, it's sort of designed around instead of with our core input code. So core input only deals with one device. XI exposes multiple devices except instead of the nice core thing of when someone clicks on my window, I'd like to get that event. The application has to open the device which is an exclusive graph. So you have to say, I'm the only one getting events from this mouse now. And basically we're back to cooperative multitasking. Excellent. Um, so yeah, that's the other 50% of the input code, which is also rubbish. Um, thankfully the implementation is as bad as the design. Um, so the unused bit makes a lot of sense because it's more or less unusable. But uh, thankfully, they've got some pretty impressive. I don't know what my machine is doing now. I can tell you that it's not the right thing there. Anyway, it's got some pretty impressive um, things built into the protocol. Uh, it's got all the device names for every possible kind of device ever made, including a foot mouse. Um, I tried to buy it, but it was like 400 bucks and I wasn't that interested, to be honest. <laughs> um, but basically, over core input, it provides you um, multiple devices so you can tell where it's come from without having to switch key maps under the client and be confusing. Um, it lets you know multiple keys. Uh, sorry. Um, it lets you deal with uh, extended buttons, so you can have up to 36 um, axes as well. Uh, gives you sub-pixel precision, which is why the GIMP uses it, because Wacom tablets are actually incredibly precise. Um, turns out this doesn't help you draw stuff that isn't rubbish, but, you know, it's all good. And so, um, we've been trying to fix it for the last couple of years. Uh, we got fairly close last year, um, or something, maybe two years ago, when we merged input hotlog, which basically uh, rewrote a lot of the <coughs> event generation code. Um, but there were two problems with that. One is that we left processing alone, which was a mistake from the point of view of quality code, but a win from the point of view of not having to work on it because it's nasty. Um, and the problem is that because no one other than the GIMP uses extended events, then we really honestly have no idea how to do them properly. Uh, we made educated guesses, and yeah, they weren't that educated as it turns out. Mostly just guesses. Um, yeah, so I tried to fix GTK to deal with extended events, but the input code is a train wreck, and it's horrible and really, really awful. So um, I asked around for advice, and they said, we don't know, no one's touched it since Owen. And I asked Owen, he said, I don't know, it just kind of works, so... <laughs> <laughs> so I left that one alone. Um, yeah. And I'm not touching QT. And then Peter came along. Um, he was probably the 30th person to show up with a great plan for having multiple pointers. Mm -hmm. Nice one, thanks. And then he sort of said, 
Well, it mostly works. Uh, there are a couple of bugs, and everyone sort of did a double take. And um, then after that, I merged into a pop plug and said, thanks for MPS, now you have to rewrite half of it. And it's still really nice. And he did it as well. Um, so that was cool. And yeah, so multiple X now takes the XI idea one step further and gives you multiple cursors as well. Um, you have multiple keyboard foci to up to 125 users can interact with the system at one time. Um, Peter can use three mice simultaneously. Um, I can't. He can also juggle a unicycle and other things I can't do. Um, but there's a cool demo on YouTube. If you search for MPF Hutter, his last name, uh, they've got 18 people using one machine simultaneously with 18 pointers flying everywhere. I don't know how productive it was, but it was a pretty cool <laughs> video. Um, and MPX is in surprisingly good shape now. Uh, the problem is that I'm stuck with work and other missed stuff, so I can't, I don't have the time to deal with all that. And Peter's writing his thesis. Um, but we think for 1.6 in April next year, we'll have a release which contains MPX and completely fixed input. Um, and he's just finished his thesis at the University of uh, South Australia. If you want to hire him, you should because he's an mad ninja. He's really, really good. Right, so between Peter and I, um, we worked out as of January what actually happens with input. Um, and then last week when I broke everything, I worked out one further step that I didn't really understand before. Um, so, Drive is called XKB Init Keyboard Device, which compiles the key map. It stashes around 10% of the key map in the device and stores the rest in a static variable. Then it calls Init Keyboard Device, which calls back into XKB Init Device, which takes the rest of the key map, applies most of it, and then it calls XKB Finish Device Init, which takes other static stuff you've stored previously and forms it basically. Um, that's how the mind thing it works, as it turns out, um, because XKB is very painfully separated from the core. Um, all of the core code is completely unaware of XKB and almost completely unable to function without it. So basically it's a series of elaborate hacks around this. Um, and that's why it gets so painful at the moment, because they're completely separated except what they are. Um, so that's device initialization. Um, input processing. Uh, you come out of process input event, you go into process key event, which is in XKB, you try to filter it for accessibility stuff, then if that fails, you go to action, which includes all the modifier stuff. And then it goes back into XKB process key event. And XKB process key event does stuff like, if this key is a modifier, clear our entire modifier map so the core process, core input processing stuff doesn't try to do anything clever. Then call back into the core input processing, and basically at this point everything falls apart and you're pretty much right. Um, this made a lot of sense when we worked that out a few months ago, um, and it explained a lot. And again, the solution is to make them not so painfully unaware of each other, because at the moment you run through all the XKB stuff, then the um, XKB stuff uh, makes sure core isn't aware of anything that's going on and doesn't try to do anything clever because XKB is already really, really clever. And then failure ensues. Um, this is why things like auto-repeat don't work quite properly at the moment. Right, so um, LCA, our beer coaster plan to success, uh, except that we forgot to write it down on a beer coaster, but luckily we remember it all, um, is to pack everything together. At the moment, input processing has a few paths. Um, 
XKB has two paths depending on which type of device it is that they need to be one because crashes in the queue if you do the wrong thing. Um, XI, the extended input stuff, that has three paths and then they all call back into the one core path because unaware of everything that's happened before. Um, and then all the core stuff does grab, which are horrendously complicated. And they're mainly complicated because the semantics that are written down more or less make no sense. And the semantics that run users you only discover by trial and error. When I say you, I mean people. I didn't touch that stuff. Um, so basically, the plan is to have a single input processing function that's aware of XKB and XI and everything. And so instead of generating, I think, three events and passing them all through and trying to glue them together really horribly, um, we just whack it into one piece and it does the right thing or some approximation thereof. The same, again, with device initialization. It just becomes one piece instead of, like, somewhere over 20. And XKB in general uh, needs to be more or less rewritten. Um, deleting the good approximation of that and XKB comp, um, Keith is rewriting that. Thanks again. Um, XI needs a minor redesign as well. Um, Basically, the core input model is what you want in terms of how clients ask for events. Just saying, if someone clicks on my window, please give me that event. Turns out this wasn't a bad idea. Um, yeah, that's basically all I have. Um, if anyone has any questions, including about how any of this actually works, or any glaring bits I've forgotten. Oh, yeah. Oh, hi. <coughs> um, yeah, so, I think we can get a really improved um, deleted and rewritten XKB in for 1.5 by next year in September or October. And then the plan for rewritten input processing is 1.6 in April. Um, because that's when Peter will have finished his thesis and I'll be not moving continents. Um, it'll take a little while and it will be pretty invasive. So, yeah, and I think a year from now is a pretty solid plan. Anyone? No one's fascinated by input, except for you. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't understand much, so perhaps I'm actually in the wrong room. Um, but uh, how does this impact input methods for complex text and languages? Input methods aren't involved with input. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this, is, this horrible mess is the server, and it's my horrible mess but I refuse to touch the client-side libraries because relative to the server there are horrible methods. Um, <laughs> so that's all done in XLib. After the events are delivered, XLib sort of passes them off into this magical black box which generates magical events somehow. Um, the code is a mess and so is the design, but I think the biggest problem with input methods is that um, there isn't one of them. So in Ubuntu we perpetually had the problem of which input method do we use because um, people who do all the Eastern languages like CJK, um, a lot of them want to be able to do it phonetically. But they argue over whether SCIM is the best or UIM is the best. Um, so we've been assured that every single person in Japan uses SCIM, which is odd because every single person in Japan apparently uses UIM. Um, no one's really coherently looking at it. Anyone who wants to is welcome. But yeah, that's another thing entirely. But that's entirely client issue. Yeah, it's completely client side. So you get to look at XLIP. But yeah, we don't have anyone doing stuff with input methods right now. Anyone? Yeah.